So there's so much talk about Diorum and how upset everyone is for the reformulation of the 2020. I don't have one, so I went out this morning and got one. I have it right here. And why don't we go home to the studio and find out what all the fuss is about. All right. Hello and welcome everybody. On this channel, we talk about fragrances. This is Peter from Centrail and I love fragrances. If you love fragrances or just want to smell great, I want to help you find a new scent or maybe even get your first scent trail. And we'll have a little bit of fun on the way. So now, let's get into this fragrance. So before we can talk about Diorum 2020 and the reformulation and all the fuss, we need to kind of understand what's been going on. So the original was launched in 2005 and the nose behind the original was Olivier Polch. Olivier worked on fragrances like Bulgari, uh, Burberry, Dolce & Gabbana, Armani, Mugler, Yves Saint Laurent, just to mention a few. In Dior 2005, at the top you will find lavender, sage and bergamot. In the middle you will find iris, which is kind of a lipsticky note, amber, cacao and cardamom. And at the base you will find patchouli, leather uh, and Tahitian vetiver. In 2011, a perfumer named Francois de Marchy, he made fragrances like Aqua de Parma, Givenchy, and Fendi, just a few. Francois reformulated the uh, fragrance, and at first sniff, it kind of felt like the cardamom was taken out, the fragrance weakened a little bit, but the rest of the notes pretty much stayed the same. People really fell in love with the lipsticky vibe of Dior. Many fragrances change over time. This does not always mean it's a reformulation. Perfumes like the House of Creed use many natural ingredients. Therefore, the ingredients change from batch to batch due to the variables of soil, water, heat, and so on throughout the years, which in turn can change the color or the scent ever so slightly. So now that we have a little background on the Dior Homme, we can talk about the new real reformulation of the 2020. Francois also had his nose on this one. There are a lot of fragrance enthusiasts who are all up in arms about this fragrance because it did change drastically. It no longer smells like the other two before. I completely understand because I would be upset if I came home this evening and my wife, or imagine your partner, you come home and they're completely different. I would be upset as well. Okay, so I've kept you long enough. Why don't we go ahead and open it? It comes in a little sleeve. I got to take that sleeve off. And here, we'll open the top. Oh my goodness. I'm excited just like you are. Here we go. Take it out. Oh my God. Perfect. <laughs> Here we are. What do you think of this? Let me see. See that? That's the new bottle. It looks quite different than the other one. Let me see if I have one handy here somewhere. Oh, here, there is one. Let's see. So this is, this is the Dior Homme Intense, first one I grabbed. You see the differences? So this is the new one. This is the original Intense. They look quite different. The Dior is right here and they put that into the cap on top. Yeah. So let's take a sniff and find out what's going on here. It's a nice little cap. I, I like these bottles. They're not bad at all. So you guys ready? We're going to put one right here. One, two, three, four, brand new. Boom. One and one for you. Wow. It is quite different. So the note breakdown of the new Dior 
Om is a fragrance called Elemi. That's right at the top. Elemi is a lemony, fresh and exotic scent from the Philippines. There is also bergamot and pink pepper right off the top. In the middle of this fragrance, after a while, there's a cashmere woods and cedar wood, also patchouli. What else we have at the bottom is musk and a fragrance note called ISOE Super, which is a woody, cozy, ambery, musky note. It's 100% synthetic and there's also vetiver at the base. Now we can see right from the start by the note breakdown that this is a completely different fragrance from the originals. Which also explains why so many fragrance enthusiasts are really upset about this reformulation. So for all you guys out there right now upset that this thing got reformulated, don't worry. They're going to keep the 2011 formulation on the shelves under a new name, Dior Homme Original. So you can still get it if you're an enthusiast like me about the lipsticky vibe. I absolutely love the original. Francois, he tried to redefine masculinity and sensuality for a man. For myself, I'm kind of on the fence about this one. I'll have to wear it a few times to see where it takes me. I bought this bottle because I actually wanted to share with you guys the evolution of a great fragrance. Nevertheless, the question still remains. Did Francois manage to redefine masculinity and sensuality of a man? Well, I guess only time will tell. Whatever happens to this fragrance, I will be here to let you know what comes of it. So this wraps up our comparison of the 2005 and 11 versus the 2020 Dior Rome. If you found this video helpful in any kind of way, share, like, hit that bell, do all the things that make this channel grow. I really do appreciate it. I'm Peter from Centrail. Take care, smell nice, and I'll see you in the next video. Centrail, out.